All right, people, welcome back. Part three, and this should be the final part. I think this part might be a little bit longer because there's actually more cards on part three than parts one and two. I tried to make them even, but then additional cards got added. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get it started, wrap this up. Ban this prediction will be on Monday, February 1st, and uh, hopefully you guys agree with me. If not, that's cool too, but you know, I'm going to try to take everything into consideration, what we did here, what I've talked about, everything that came to mind, and slap it together in one Big old ban list prediction, and hopefully it goes well, and hopefully I get a couple right in this upcoming ban list, hopefully. You know, it's just, we don't know when it is, and fucking Konami. It's just like, nah, 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 we're not gonna tell you. It could be fucking tomorrow, it could be fucking next year, you don't fucking know. It's like, oh, thank you, Konami. Anyway, let's go ahead and get it started. So starting off, we are talking about Divine Win. Divine Win of the Mesh Sally. Uh, it's one of them Saki cards. It's one of them loopy Saki cards that was enough to get on uh, Konami's attention. And, uh, yeah, I'll probably just stay at one. And it's not like it, like, it, it hurts their figures to not have it moved, you know? And while Stratos may be banned as well, he's also, he was also part of the Loopy Miss Valley Wind Loopy shit, too. So, you know, there's a couple of fingers to be pointed at. But, you know, Divine Wind, you just loop it, loop it, loop it with uh, Ancient Fairy and loop it some more. So, nah, it'll probably stay at one. I thought maybe it was going to move up to two uh, back when you send you's were, you know, popular. And I was like, oh, well, you know, you send you's, they return to the hand and you go ahead and summon one from your deck. That's pretty good, right? I thought me Konami wouldn't want to go ahead and promote that. Nah, nah. So, Divine Wind will probably stay at one. Uh, Soul Drain. Uh, this was actually requested on the previous video. And I was like, yeah, I'll get to it. It's in, the, it's in third, part three. Uh, Soul Drain. Soul Drain will probably also stay at, uh, at one. Uh, there's a lot of floatiness. There's, there is some floatiness in Yu-Gi-Oh! And, uh, it, it, I think it's, I think it's reached a point where it's actually broad enough that it's in, it's, it's in contendency with Macro and Defigure. The, 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 uh, there's a lot of decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! that's just like, yeah, you know, we, we do things in the graveyard. And with Soul Drain and in the Banner Sound, it's just like, you can't. You know, so uh, we saw it get hit down to one. It's been at one for a cool minute now. I want to say it went down to one in, in the great September 2013, and it's been there ever since. And understandably so, you know, it's just a lot of a lot of floodiness. And while it, it, it may not hurt too bad, the current decks, I mean, it would probably hurt Cosmos a little bit. Um, you know, past, future, present, you know, Konami's thinking about all these contingencies, and it's just a really broad card that hurts their product salesmen. So while, it, it, you know, it hurts Cosmos today, can hurt... Uh, you know, uh, Yang Zing's yesterday and whatever deck in the future, you know, so <clears throat> it's understandable why it's at one. It, it's deservingly so. It, it, it's pretty much earned its spot well, along with Defisher and Macro in the TCG. All right, moving on. All right. I know I have to talk about these Infernity cards. Uh, taking, keeping personal bias out of the way, I hate Infernity. So they're probably my one of my most hated decks in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm glad they're dead, but, uh... Uh, it's just hard, really hard to pinpoint where Konami sits, you know, because it used to be, you won Worlds, you're dead, and it's going to be a long time, but we saw Teller Knights win Worlds, and, I mean, what happened to them? I don't know, I think when it comes to Teller Knights and that whole thing, maybe they just didn't consider that Teller Knights really won that, that maybe they were like, well, you know, Necros had all these restrictions, and they're still putting that work, so, you know. They killed they killed Necros more than they killed Tellers. We saw Tellers a couple of times, but Necros, not even once, so I don't know, but, uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, you know, Infernities have done more than enough. You know, you 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 act like you know Infernities are absolutely innocent. They they've destroyed formats. Trishula. They banned Trishula. They banned. They mostly banned Lavavo Chain. Uh, they the Infernities have put in that work, and you know it's just kind of kind of had to go ahead and put them away. Uh, you know, it, it, I feel like the people who want Archfiend back and Ferny all that shit are kind of like in the same boat with Stratos, where you've had your fun with the cards. But then you just want it back just because you want it back when you know that you're still guilty, you know. So, I don't know. I don't know. If it gets, if, if, if Infernity shit gets off the list, then okay, fine, whatever. I don't have any say. But if it was my personal say, I'd say no. And it seems like Konami might say no as well. I'm not going to predict it. I will never predict it. I would leave it to a surprise just like Stratos. Same boat, same boat. All right, moving on. We have a drama trio ceasefire. Uh, let's go ahead and group those two together because they're pretty much cards that moved up to two and then just kind of sat there. And, uh, you know... Uh, someone said they should move to three. No? I mean, uh, I'll leave that to surprise, too. They've had plenty of time. Plenty of time. Since they moved Drama Trio and Ceasefire up to two, they had plenty of time to move them to three. And 
I just don't see it. As I said, I'd rather just leave it to a surprise factor. Saints Fire 3 sounds sucky as all fuck. Just burn, 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 burn. Now, it, it would just seem like it would just re uh, <laughs> rejuvenate some people trying to do burn, and that's the last thing you want. And a drama trio can potentially lock you out of playing, and that's understandably uh, so. That's the reason why they limit it to one, because you like a drama trio, give you three tokens, and then just kill one of your tokens, and just a drama trio again. Ah, five tokens. Now what? <laughs> just sit there while I go ahead and set up my field and get ready to fuck you up. So, uh, it's an, you know, it's, it, it locks you out of the duel. So, I'm not sure. I'm it would just increase the consistency of being able to do that. Not that anybody would really play those two cards, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure if Konami is worth uh, wanting to take that risk. And, you know. All right. Moving on. We have Shrit to One. No. 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 It's a Necros card. And arguably the the Necros card. Uh, you know, I, I see I see probably even Brio and Unicorn moving up before Shrit ever getting unbanned because clearly it was Shrit. They put down Shrit down to one and we saw the Shrit shenanigans. As soon as Shrit was banned, we're a Necro. So it was clearly the core of the deck. So no, 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 Shrit will stay banned. Uh, card Destruction, no. <laughs> card Destruction uh, is one of those perfect world cards. It's like, well, hey, you know, you your opponent discards their hand and you discard your hand and you draw a new hand. So that's fine. No, no, no. no. Because, of course, in a perfect world, your opponent's not going to have the same cards as you. You're not going to have the same cards as them. You're going to draw into different cards. It, you give to, uh, the game two based on luck. And that's not even considering, you know, all the shit that was like, hey, yeah, this card, me, hell fucking yeah. I'm playing Burning Abyss. Let's go. Card to Shotgun. I'm playing Dark World. And, like, and Dark World is like the number one key. Key and Dragon Wilders too. It's just like, oh my god, just discard all the shit and you won the graveyard from your hand. And then draw a new hand and then all that shit still goes off. Like, no, 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 no. So, uh, Contrary Destruction, we, we had that one for a cool minute, and it's deservingly banned. Just, just the fact that you could just redraw your hand like that is just ridiculous. It's, it's kind of like a pseudo-mulligan, and there's no mulligans in Yu-Gi-Oh, so no. Uh, Sacrifice moving up, at either two or three. No, uh, like I said, it'll probably be a little while before Klee cards move. You know, Klee's just got pretty much killed off, and uh, that's what Konami wanted, definitely, to promote their new shit. Uh, and... Uh, well, it sucks. It's just like, you know, tower is banned, and then you create all these new cards that are just tough as tower, and just get uh, difficult to get over, and lightning's coming out, and, you know, America soon, so tower turbo wouldn't even be a thing. You just summon lightning and run it over. Easy. Uh, you know, you put scout down to one, and deck hasn't been everything since, when all you had to do is hit wavering eyes. Uh, sacrifice would probably be the first card to move up. Uh, just because it doesn't really affect the gameplay of the cleats too much, you know. There there would be less helmet, and you should be like, you know, quit, and then tribute for a double tribute, and it'd just be like a pendulum tribute, summon decks. Not too terrible, especially when you compare it to PP, but not for a while. So I'd say Sacrifice would probably be the first card to move up in cleats, but like I said, not for a while. Alright, Rodney. Nah. No one really plays in Rodney, and she's not that good. As I said, Wavering Eyes would probably get hit down to one, which means that when no one's really playing uh, uh, Rodney already, when you have, uh, you know, uh, Sorcerer and Luster and Wavering Eyes, but Wavering Eyes is the one that even lowers the consistency even more of Blessing Out there Rodney plays. Uh, so, no, and like I said, hit Strike. Strike is the problem. It doesn't matter if you can search Strike with a Rodney. If you hit Strike, then there's less uh, Counter Trap cards to search for. I mean, what? You're going to go Rodney Pop. What are you going to show me? You're one solemn warning, you're one solemn strike, and then what? What? You know? So, no, nah, Rodney's fine. Just hit Strike. Uh, this one was this one perplexed me, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. Someone said, uh, uh, Constellar Diamond banned. Uh, the video is deleted uh, now, so you don't, you don't go back to the video and then harass the person, or whatever. I'm not gonna you know uh, name drop, but someone said uh, Diamond banned, and I'm kind of curious. Uh, if you want to go ahead and post a comment, you you can you know, and I'll read it myself. And if you'd be like, and all you have to do is put you know in parentheses, delete this after you read it. I'll get it, I'll see it before anybody else, I'll read what you have to say and I'll delete the comment if you want to, because if in case you're embarrassed or anything. If not, then you want to privately say, you know, why you think uh, Diamond should be banned, I want to know. But why Diamond? Because Diamond is not even the shit anymore. Like, Diamond used to be on Burning Abyss and, and, uh, and, uh, Shadals, maybe, maybe we could talk, but, I mean, really, what, what's so good about Diamond that it deserves to be banned? Like, because Patola Miles attached to the semi turtle during the end phase, like, I don't understand. I don't get that. So I would really like to know. But no, Diamond should be banned. Diamond's fine. Uh, moving on, Debris Dragon. Uh, could Debris Dragon move up? Yes. Will it move up? I doubt it. Just because it's another one of them Dragon Ruler related cards. You know, uh, it, would def it definitely should be the next Dragon Ruler related card. I would not mind seeing, you know, uh, Dragon Ravine getting unbanned and, Dra and Debris Dragon moving up to two on the next list. Because that, that's definitely the next card in the lineup. It, it was one of the... Uh, the cards that got hit just because it was part of Dragon Rule. It's just because you summon a Dragon Rule, summon a Debris Dragon. Uh, it could summon a baby, make Black Rose, or you would just make the Star Eater. 
But, uh, you know, it's just not... I, I'm a little bit upset that the British Dragons are arrested. I believe OCG has three of the British Dragons, but I don't know. It just depends on how salty uh, Konami is about uh, Dragon Rollers. Like I said, they they hit Dragon Ravine to ban, and they haven't even put back up three, even though Dragon Rollers have been banned. So, I don't know. Maybe they just don't want anything with Dragon Rollers where they think to be moved. But I definitely say Dragon Ravine up to three, and then the British Dragon up to two. That'd be the first steps into coming back after the Dragon Roller hit. Uh, no Super Regroup, just... Those two, we'll try it. We'll start off with those two and uh, discuss anything else. Uh, moving on, uh, Dandelion. That is a curious one, too. I don't know. Like, out of all the things that were in the plant engine, the, the, the lone flyer and the glow up bulb and the, and the, the spore and, you know, and Dandelion, out of all of that, all those other cards have been moved up to three, but yet Dandelion is still at one. And I've been, I've been wondering that myself. Even in the OCG. Dandelion is still at one, and I'm just kind of scratching my head about, okay, I mean, if, if I'm if I not saying anything, I'm going to get it, and when it's a typical graveyard period, you get two tokens. Cool. Alright, you know, I mean, if, if tokens is a problem, I mean, we, we have Scapegoat at three, and that's almost four tokens. We have Hippo Carnival and shit like that, so, I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I would love to see Dandelion move up to maybe two or three, because oh. who cares, but... I'm just saying, like, if you want to summon Synchro Summon with some dandy tokens, then more power to you. Synchro Summoning's arguably the weakest mechanic. Like, if you think that Dandelion going to 3 is going to make Synchro Summon so broke that they can, can even compare to the mechanic of Pendulum Summon and Peepee, then, hey, but, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, you know, as, a, as all those, as all four of those cards, and Dandelion is the last one to get moved up to 1? I mean, move up? At, after Lone Fire? Like, okay. Alright. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Summoning some tokens... Or summoning any plant card from your deck. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. We have Soul Charge moved to 2 or 3. No. <laughs> uh, as simple as that, no. Uh, Soul Charge is still a ridiculous card, Saki card, that Konami feels fit to be at 1, even though she agrees 1, 1 Soul Charge. Soul Charge is ridiculous. And... I don't know. I hate that card so much, but no, that card's ridiculous. I don't even care. Uh, it seems like you kind of put this where it's just like, hey, you know, PPs are the top deck, so we should get three soul charts so we can fight them. I hate, I hate those fucking arguments. I hate the fucking arguments where you're like, well, the top deck is so good that we have to bring back cards from the past to combat the the, the current. That's just fucking stupid. And you're pretty much saying, hey, let's not have a ban list at all. <laughs> that's, and that's essentially what you are saying. So uh, no, no, soul charts should definitely stay at one. Skill Drain to three. No. <laughs> uh, skill Drain, uh, I know you probably oh, OCG. Like I said, they're a faster deck. I mean, they're a faster game. Skill Drain is another one of those broad floodgates that hurts everybody. You know, Macro, uh, Defender, Soul Drain, Skill Drain, there's just, there's just turn your game into Caveman Yu-Gi-Oh. And this is coming from a Klee player, all right? You, uh, it, that's totally what we need is Caveman Yu-Gi-Oh to play them. Slip up from Skill Drain, some of the biggest monsters you can, and just beat over your opponent, you know? Uh, you know, at the, you know, probably monarchs would even probably play. I mean, their, their effects are pretty good, but, you know, just pull that skill drain, play their field spell, have a tribute summon monarch that turns into a 32 beater, you know, with their field spell, and caveman Yu Gi Oh! it. So, mm, you know, skill drain should definitely stay at one. It's definitely so. Alright, we came back full circle. Uh, I can't remember if I talked about him in any other part, and I posted him twice, but, uh, uh, someone said my, my, uh, Nigga Man, Nigga Man, I, I had no idea who the fuck Nigga Man is, there's no Yu-Gi-Oh card called Nigga Man, and I, I doubt Konami would ever create a card called Nigga Man, I'm assuming you're talking about Stratos, uh, still no, <laughs> you know, uh, there's just really no point for him to come off ban, really, I mean, I mean, look at LCG, look at LCG, yeah, they have Stratos, cool. But they also have only one Shadow Mist. And I think, especially with with heroes are today, with your Mass Heroes and your Denklaw, I think he'd rather have three uh, Shadow Mist than one Shadows. And it seems like if Konami TCG was going to bring back Shadows, they would, of course, look over at OCG with precedence and be like, hey, you know, when you had Stratos and you had everything, how'd it go? Oh, yeah, they won our Nationals. Hmm, and what'd you do about it? Oh, oh, we just hit Shadow Mist down to one. All right, we'll do that too. <laughs> so, do you really want that? I don't think so. I don't think so. You, you really don't need it. You just want them because you want them. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 if it was me, if it was totally me, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, keep Shadows banned. Keep Shadows banned. We'll go ahead and keep our Shadow Mists. Because Shadow Mist plays and Dark Law plays, that, that's what that's the better heroes. Cause, I mean, really, what, what would Shadows do for you? He's a, he's a much slower searcher than the majority of cards. You already have uh, your triple E call, which doesn't even waste your normal summon. What are you, are you really gonna mass change him into any of the the mass changes heroes? Nah, nah. You don't really miracle. You don't really want to really miracle fuse him into that great tornado guy. Nah. So what is he doing? What is he doing for you? Nothing. 
In exchange, you just got, you know, you're arguably your best monster in your deck, uh, Shadow Mistake. In exchange for someone who's not even really helping. I mean, uh, you can summon Shadows and switch your one Shadow Miss. Have fun. Nah, you're fine without him. So, uh, like I said, I'd rather just leave it to a surprise factor. But especially with the precedence that we had over OCG, where they had their Stratos and all this shit, and they won OCG's Nationals. Yeah, there's precedence that would definitely be looked over if they were considered bringing off Stratos. So, just be happy with what you got. Uh, moving on, Dragon Ruler's coming back. No, <laughs> no. Uh, we, we've made a lot of progress with the Dragon Ruler's coming, uh, being banned, you know? We've got Dragon Ravine back, uh, you know, we haven't seen much of Dark Matter, and we've, we've been okay with that. We bring Dragon Ruler's back, think, look, think, think it, and look at all the cards that would have to, Dark Matter would have to be banned. Like, there's no argument. You know, even with one Dragon Ruler, or, I mean, one of each Dragon Ruler, we've seen, just for a split weekend, we've seen the power of that Dark Matter OTK, FTK destruction with Dragon Ruler's. No. So... Dark Matter would have to be banned. We'd have to probably put Dragon Ravine back on the on the ban list because of precedent, so no. Uh then we would uh we wouldn't be able to move anything dragon related card. It would just it would just be a hassle. It's not even worth it. You know? Dragon Rulers are banned, they're fine. Oh, we have to put the babies back on the list. And yeah, they would have to go they would go from three to ban to three to ban. Like, no, 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 no. There's, there's, there's no reason to move all that. I know how some people are are, you know, Dragon Rule enthusiasts, I don't understand how like the destruction that they caused, but uh, some people really like them, and no, no. And then, and, then, and with that, someone they also said Dark Matter to one. You only need one Dark Matter. <laughs> you summon the Dark Matter, you send the Dragon Rulers, summon them back, and you FTK. Like, no, 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 no. Dra dark Matter would have to be banned for the Dragon Rulers to come back. So, no. Dragon Rulers banned, Dark Matter at three, who cares, you know? But no. Especially with Blue Eyes and all that shit, you know? Blue Eyes can actually use Dark Matter. It's not too terrible of a play, so. You know, I think they'd rather have Dark Matter here than Dragon Rulers. Alright, moving on. Anti Spell Fragrance. Nah. No, like I said, when it comes to hitting the floodgates of Yu-Gi-Oh, they have to be sweepingly broad. Well, you could be like, oh, well, you know, anti-spell fragrance. I talked about this before. Right? Uh, anti-spell fragrance is kind of like, oh, yeah, well, it hurts pendulums. So, you know, it doesn't hurt any other decks. It's not broad enough. That's like saying that Imperial Engine Wall should be hit because it hurts Cosmos. You know, it's just, it's just not broad enough of a hit. Well, some decks are more phased by anti-spell fragrance. Uh, some aren't, you know, and it's not equal. It's not equal enough to really warrant it, like, you know, macro and skill drain and cards like that. So, no. Uh, if they do hit it, all right, then I guess they really want to promote pendulums, but I would not be surprised if they don't. You know, I talked about it that already, though. All right, moving on. Raw Magic Library. No, like I said, uh, how many times... I know, you were totally worried about that uh, that Chicken Grace game OT FTK, all right? Uh, yeah. How many times has the deck topped the regional? Oh, none. Okay. Why see us? Hmm, none. All right. I mean, maybe your locals, but still, the deck is too inconsistent, and it just doesn't bring enough attention on the radar to be hit. Is Royal Magical Library a sacky ass card? Hell yeah! Did, should it be hit? Probably. Will it be? Nah. So yeah. All right. Moving on. Heavy Storm. No, no, no. Give you Heavy's Feather Duster before we give you Heavy Storm. Uh, have you not seen the Pendulum Destruction? All right. Wavering Eyes, uh, Luster, all of them. Uh, Plush Fire. Run. There's just so many cards that are just like, yeah, go ahead and destroy me and the Pendulum Scale, and I'll go ahead and give you a plus. No, 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 no. Uh, you even have precedence from the OCG. They banned Heavy Storm and gave them Heavy Shadow Duster just so they can't destroy their own pendulum scales. Like, no, no, no. Uh, so, but you really, we don't need any. I mean, come on. Triple Twin Twister, MST's out the ass. Like, you know, Galaxy Cyclone. We have back row destruction out the ass, people. Uh, uh, yo, Archfiend Centric. You have shit to pop back row. You don't need the, the one card Heavy Storm. So, we'll just go ahead and leave that alone. Uh, moving on. Draco Face Off. No. Card's too new and they're, that's the next big deck. Like, no, no. You know, like, you, 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 you said face off, like, you didn't even post a thing got luster. If anybody, it would be luster. So, no, they're going face off is fine. Uh, moving on to some more interesting cards. Talk about Disc Commander. No, no. Do you know how much a revival was in Yu Gi Oh? Freaking just send Disc Commander, call the Haunted Oasis, draw out the ass. Like, no, 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 no. no. You'd be seeing that card in freaking Teller Knights. You'd be seeing it in Heroes. Like, no, no, no. Uh, you know, I know it's a role of Destiny Heroes, but it's not Destiny Heroes would exploit it. All you gotta do is just play a rival card on Disc Commander and draw. Yeah, yeah, and there's some, there are some draw, there are some rival cards here in Yu-Gi-Oh, all right? I mean, just think of the shenanigans. I play Yu-Bell, there's Limit Reverse, bam, there's Disc Commander right there. So, Call the Hunted Oasis Limit Reverse, that's nine cards. I'm, I'm summoning Disc Commander eight, nine times, that's drawing 18 cards. That's, that's part of Greed on Crack, like, no, 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 no. Uh, Trigodia, Trigodia can go up to three. Uh, you haven't seen much of it, no, neither Gores either. Uh, I would argue that Trag is stronger than Gores. You know, Gores at three, Trag is at two. Uh, but President's from OCG and, you know, Konami's going to look at the cards that, on Semi-Limited and be like, 
All right, Dragon Ball Z three. No one cares. No one's gonna play it. So yeah. Uh, Pot agreed, and the argument is that everyone could play it. Yeah, Yu Gi Oh is a game based on luck. This isn't a perfect game. <laughs> it really isn't. If it was a perfect world where everybody would have Pot Agreed in their opening hand, then sure. But then you could just have Pot Agreed banned and just have a new rule that everybody just draws more cards. You know, like think about it. Not everybody, since Yu Gi Oh is based on luck and there's what luck that you draw. Not everybody's gonna get the Pot Agreed. So well, your argument is like, well, everybody can play it. You know, uh, I guess you're assuming that oh, well, it helps the lower tier decks, but it helps the higher tier decks too. So yeah, sure. While your your ice barriers get to draw two more cards, the Pot Agreed PP gets to draw two more cards too. So how's that fair? The game is based on luck and red mice, so you, you know we're dueling. I get Pot Agreed, you don't. <laughs> you know, so that could be I'm going first. I play Pot of Greed. I draw plus. So I, it's like I'm drawing my six as if we're back to old drawing um, ways. Like you know, before they said player one would draw five cards. So no one would that rule. Or probably even worse, you would start off with only five cards. I draw into my six Pot of Greed and then draw into seven cards. So my seven cards versus your five cards. That's fair, right? That's fair. Mm -hmm. So no, that, that that's broken. And last but not least. What everybody draws isn't fair. We could be playing the same exact deck, card for card. We could, but when we shuffle our decks and we do our searches and stuff, what you play Pot of Greed and draw to, and what I play uh, Pot of Greed and draw to, isn't equal in either. So look at all the unfair contingencies of Pot of Greed. Like I said, you argue that's fair because everybody can freaking play it, but look at all the things that I just listed that are unfair about Pot of Greed. Like, no, 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 no. Plus one, no cost, no nothing. Like, ridiculous. Like, if you want to have a draw card, you want to have a plus one draw, play fucking Max C. That is the balanced version of Pot of Greed. Take it or leave it. All right. Uh, moving on. Farm Girl down to, I think, one. No, no Cosmo hits. <laughs> Let's get that straight. No Cosmo hits. Uh, Cosmos is the big cash cow of TCG. Uh, I mean, look how long it took to hit Burning Abyss. You know, and while you make all, oh, you could say the same thing for argument for PP. No, 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 that's different. That, that's more of a, uh, 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 Frankenstein deck. And when it comes to Frankenstein decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, I mean, look at Hat, you know? Look at, let's get Frankenstein decks. They hit the shit out of Frankenstein decks because they're not archetypal, you know? This whole PP perform made shit right there, that, that, that's a Frankenstein deck if I've ever seen one. So they're probably going to go ahead and lower the consistency of that shit. But, you know, Cosmos, Cosmos are making them the money. Like, that, that's the big thing. Like I said, Burning Abyss before, Cosmos now. So no, there's not going to be any Cosmo hits. So sorry. So uh, just endure it for a little bit longer. And when they're done selling Cosmos, they'll hit it. And if it's still relevant, and we'll move on to the next TCG big deck. All right, moving on. Uh, Cyberstein. They could. I mean, I thought maybe they were going to do something with it, especially copying off uh, OCG. But it seems like they don't want to move it just because it's more of an aggressive card. You know, you pay the life points, you summon, and you push her game. You know, you push her them. Seems like a uh, much more aggressive card. And Fernoids can play it. And I don't know. I don't know. It seems like they would have, they would have moved Cyberstein. I mean, you act like Cyberstein was just moved on OCG yesterday. They've had plenty of time to look and be like, hmm, should we move Cyberstein? Nah. So I doubt it. Like I said, I leave it to a surprise factor, but I seriously doubt it. Moving on, Monster Born. No. Like, Soul Charge is already ridiculous, and and this was, and this one of the balancing factors is that you can't attack. Monster Reborn? Spell. Spell? Let's go ahead and say that. Spells. You have a Revival. We have plenty of Revival. We already talked about the Disc Commander. But, Monster Reborn is a spell. That is, like, top deck central. You draw Monster Reborn, hop back into it, summon the monster. There's no restrictions. There's no cost. You could still attack. You could push for game. You could revive your opponent's monsters. Like, nah, nah. Monster Reborn adds... Is determinedly banned. Uh, like I said, in OCG, it's a faster game, and sure, but, you know, we, we banned Monster Born in, I think, September 2013, and certainly so. We've been fine without it. I mean, for goodness sakes, we have Soul Charge, and Soul Charge, Monster Born, there's arguments to be set for both. Alright, moving on. Twin Twisters. No? Why do you need to hit Twin Twisters? Because it pops back row? I mean, that I think Twin Twisters is the closest we're going to get to the bouncing. It's, it's the perfect medium between you know, our single popping back roads and, you know, our, us having heavy storm and poppy treasures. Yeah, it's the perfect medium. You use two cards to pop two of your opponent's cards. That's, I mean, well, two cards, two for two. It's still zero, but it's the perfect medium. You're popping more, but the same amount, and it's just it's a great. Twin Twister is one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh -Yu cards that Konami has made in a cool minute. So, no, no. Uh, all right, moving on. Rekindling. All right, I know who said this. <laughs> Uh, and he said, I think in Konami's eyes, and I know you're probably saying, like, oh, well, you know, it's not too bad, I want to play it in my, you know, in my, uh, flame bells and do all that play, no, no, I think in Konami's eyes, 
they see it as a tacky card. I think I think that would brought up enough relevancy for Konami to see it and uh, hit it down to an appropriate means because it was one of them tacky generating quotes go super hyper plus cards. You know, I mean, just look at Six Samurais. Are Six Samurais doing anything? No. Uh, you know. Do you, in that argument, should they get Gateway back? You could say, but once again, it's one of them resource sent Saki generated cards. And, you know, Konami's like, alright, we'll just go ahead and put it down to one. Soul Charge at one. He's multiple revival cards, so just have him at one. Alright. Yeah. Uh, so while decks that could play uh, Rikin and don't really play it, I think the Konami sees it as one of them cards, and I apologize if you don't. And, uh, you know, and maybe you can go ahead and get a job at Konami and then, you know, go to their staff meeting when they talk about the ban list and maybe convince everybody in the meeting. But, no, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. I'll leave it to the surprise factor. I don't, I don't see it. Lunon, Dark Destroyer. No Cosmo hits. Moving on. Uh, Imperial Order. Alright, I saw this. Imperial Order should be unbanned because we have Castell. Okay. So, th there's a difference between Imperial Order and, and Anti-Spell Fragrance. Anti-Spell Fragrance, you have to set the spells. You're, you're going a little bit slower pace and a lot. Burke's Pendulum is understandable. Then I'm going with Beast. Beast is a monster. Monsters are easier to handle. Alright? There's a lot of ways to handle, and it's harder to bring out. Imperial Order? Imperial Order is an interesting card, and the reason why it got banned is because it's a trap card that blocks spells, and generally, how do you destroy the trap cards with a spell card? You know? It, it, yeah. You know? It blocks itself. Now, you could... I heard... I saw the argument. Oh, well, since we have Castell, then you can go ahead and handle it. Then you should talk to that... You should say that about every floodgate. Then, you know... That, uh, you know, Macro should go up to three, and Defense should go up to three because we have Castell, and it's not a very valid argument, you know? You act like every single, I mean, I get that rank fours are the shit, but you act like every single deck can do rank fours. So, we should be able to just go ahead and flip up Imperial Order, and then lock people out of spell cards and be like, well, you have Castell. I mean, good luck summoning it, good luck bringing it out when you set up your scales, and I'm, I'm, they're going to get in, in I, you know, I'm going to get in spells, and, you know, so good luck doing that, like I said. Beast takes a lot of setup, and while it's always there, you gotta run out cards outside the norm. Imperial Order? You just start on your freaking deck, and here we go. So no, no, Imperial Order it has deserved this ban. It deserves this ban. You can't even fucking, you can fucking, you know, uh, you know, hit a trap card against Beast. Imperial Order? I mean, what? You gonna try Twin Twister it? Nah. MST it? Nah. You know, so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Imperial Order protects itself. That's what makes Imperial Order ridiculous in comparison. Alright, moving on. TG Hyper Librarian? No. I get it that uh, that uh, that synchros aren't the shit anymore, but TG Hyper Librarian is another one of them sacky loop cards. Just being able to draw, 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 draw. Uh, like I said, you got one TG Hyper Librarian who will draw off of every synchro summon, while you have three uh, uh, Fumi synchros who only draw off of its synchro summon. So that's more of a fair card and uh, more uh, fair analysis. You know, multiple TG Hyper Librarians will draw into multiple cards and have multiple engines like I said, no. And uh, it, it's a draw card. It's simple as that. It's a draw card. <laughs> it rewards you for doing plays that you're already going to do. So you have your one Hyper Librarian. You do your plays. You draw your cards. You make your big Synchro push. And then that's it. I think that's fair. Uh, that's a repeat card that I didn't even see. So I'm going to delete it. Uh, if you guys are wondering all the cards that I talk about in the video, they're in the description. I talked about them. And uh, I'm not going to give you timestamps for that until it's, but at least you can scroll down and be like, alright, we well, talked about this card, so I can, you know, eventually find it in this video. You can just listen. I'm, I'm going down the list in order in the description, so you can just, you know, kind of approximate where I'm talking about it. Alright, moving on. Ignister Band. The Synchro Monster? Why? I mean, he's good, but he's no problem card. He's, he's one of the power monsters. Well, not only no, because, you know, they're trying to promote that deck, but why? You know? Like I said, if anybody, if you're pointing anybody, it's Luster. Because he's destroying the Pendulum Scales, getting you pluses, and and the, the tuner. So, yeah, like I said, if anybody, it would be him. So you don't even need Bandit uh, against there now. Uh, BLS moving up. No. Uh, I guess there's not a lot of uh, Darks and Lights, but BLS has earned his spot. That's ridiculous. Uh, BLS has won uh, plenty of duels. Plenty of duels. And like I said, not even OCG has three BLS. Like, fuck that. You know, they have three Chaos Emperor before they have three BLS. Like, no. Uh, mind control. Mind control, what, moving up? Is mind control we have currently? No. No, it's one of them takey cards. It, it, it's under a spot. You know, we tried a uh, freaking Smash Deal and that got rebanned immediately. Like, unbanned and rebanned in the next list. And uh, mind control is just the most balanced takey card that we have, really. Some archetypes <coughs> have their own takey cards, and you have uh, Gradles, who are archetypal takey card deck. But. A uh, splashable free card, anybody can have it. I get it, there's so many restrictions, but you gotta keep in mind. 
you can still synchro with the car, you can still see with the car, like, you just take your opponent's shit and then just use them with it. So it's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. Final control is like the bad one. Reconstruction, no, it's one of them trap cards. Uh, they might go ahead and move it up to two because OCG did it, but that's only precedence. But it seems like they're fine with their trap cards that it's in the, the group of uh, bottomless torrent hole. Warning, Compulse, Ring of Destruction, Solemn Strike, you know, those trap cards that should be at one and stay at one because they might go up and down depending on the format. All right, moving on. Symbol of Heritage, no. Uh, they put this card down to one for Lone Fire, and personally, if I was me, I would I would just give you two Lone Fire. I I don't like the idea of Symbol of Heritage being on the list just because of Lone Fire. I think that's fucking stupid. Because you go Lone Fire, Lone Fire, Lone Fire, and then Symbol of Heritage, and then some Lone Fire because you have three monsters with the same name because you just went and went through Lone Fire. There's not too many decks that can you know put three of the same monster in the graveyard, but it's literally there for a Lone Fire. So as long as Lone Fire is at three, Symbol of Heritage will be at one. You know, OCD did it, we did it, and. Yeah, like I said, I would just have two Lone Fire too, and you have three Symbol of Heritage, who cares? But because of Lone Fire, we had to hit Symbol of Heritage. I think it's dumb. I think Lone Fire is dumb. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Dorn. Dorn has loops. As simple as that. We tried him. We, he's been a one, two, one, two, and we tried him. He has loops. Simple as that. And I think the last card I have to talk about, Night Assailant. He has loops. Uh, it's, it has nothing to do with Tour God. I saw the person who's coming. It's like, oh, you know, Tour God has can summon Scar, and so now you're saying it can move up because who cares? No. The problem with it, it's not the, the Fiend part, it's not the Flip part, it's the Discard part. Literally, when Night Assailant is pitched, and sends the graveyard from hand to graveyard, you get another Flip monster, including Night Assailant. So, you would literally be costless because you could just keep on pitching Night Assailant and get your Night Assailant, Night Assailant, get your Night Assailant, Night Assailant, and get your Night Assailant. That's the reason why Night Assailant is one, because he loops himself, so. Uh, yeah, OCG has him at one, we have him at one, he loops. Simple as that. Alright, and I think that I am done, people. So if there's any card in these part three parts that I have not talked about at all, or, or you don't know, if you're not sure, if you're absolutely not sure if I've talked about it or not, I will actually refer you to the part. So if there's actually a card I've talked about, I will refer you to the part, you click the description, you pull it down, you see, you know, the card in the list, you go there, and, you know, approximate, like I said, not turning dimes down, so it's way too much work. And you find where I talk about it. If there's a card that I have not talked about, and I talked about over 90 cards here in these last three cards. If there's a card that I have not talked about, I will personally reply to you in the comment section what I think about it. So, simple as that. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this three-part long video. Really tired to talk about uh, like I said, Banless Prediction will be up on Monday. And you can probably uh, think have a general idea if you sit down, re-listen to all three videos, all three parts. You can kind of get a general approximation of what I'm going to put on my Banless Prediction. And I uh, hope that you guys agree, and hopefully I get a couple right on this upcoming list for TCG. Uh, yeah. So, tell me what you guys think. Give me your guys' opinion about everything that I've said so far. Uh, you know, I hope that you guys enjoyed. It's fun. I enjoy doing these every time I think there's a brand new ban list. It was more easier to do when, you know, we definitely knew so I could just be like, all right, well, I'm doing it the week before uh, the month ahead of the definite uh, uplift. Uh, this goes up and now it's just like, I don't know, I'll just guess. So I say March, so do it now at the end of January. Put my prediction up in February. The list will come out, I think, sometime in March, middle, uh, early to mid-March, maybe between like the 9th and like the 20th. That during that time, uh, we'll get our list, and uh, we'll see how many I got right. So anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for all support, and uh, yeah, hope you guys are looking forward to my balance prediction going up on Monday. Thanks for watching.